So in terms of microvascular decompression, I'm not going to get into the surgical details because I wanted to mostly go ahead to uh, the non-traditional treatments that you probably have heard about less. But in this case, you can see the trigeminal nerve, there's a branch of the superior cerebral artery, and the goal there is to use micro dissection and a microscope to carefully dissect the uh, arachnoid plane between that uh, artery and that trigeminal nerve and move it away from the trigeminal nerve and place a piece of felt or tether that artery away from the nerve. Um, it's still, I think it's important to know that the goal here is not to damage the trigeminal nerve, but there's still a risk of having numbness in the face, just like with stereotype radius surgery and with uh, balloon compression or any other percutaneous treatment. In fact, if you look at the Japanese literature, they describe a technique of internal neurolysis or raking the nerve, which is uh, when you take a micro dissector, you actually would separate the fascicles of the trigeminal nerve. And my belief is that it's that micro trauma to the nerve that may in and of itself be the therapeutic mechanism behind microvascular decompression, which is why some people can get better by the surgery without having neurovascular conflict, which is also the reason why you don't have to see vascular compression when you approach the surgery uh, or when you choose to do the surgery. Now, I want to switch gears to the percutaneous ablative procedures. These are very, uh, yeah, I think, very effective uh, procedures. It does take some skill in terms of knowing how to use an, uh, the C-arm or the fluoroscopy equipment in order to get a sub-mental view and visualize the foramen of valley. So all those parameter that you learn in the skull base are actually relevant to our practice. The goal is to place something through the side of the mouth without puncturing the oral cavity, advancing the needle into the foramen of valley, advancing it to a point so you can either place a balloon within Meckel's cave or place an RF needle in a certain part, directed into a certain part of the uh, ganglion and ablate that region. These percutaneous procedures really could be used for anyone. Um, they are particularly useful for people that need acute pain relief. So if someone is admitted to the hospital with a uh, status trigeminus or tri trigeminal neuralgia crisis, uh, we can use balloon compressions to get that acute pain relief um, because it works very quickly. So often considered as a, if there's a failure of other treatments, I've also used it as a first-line treatment once I've discussed the risks and benefits of the various procedures. Um, I also tend to use balloon compressions for multiple sclerosis-related trigeminal neuralgia. And the reason why is because if we look at outcomes for the treatment of multiple sclerosis-related trigeminal neuralgia across percutaneous procedures, microvascular decompression, and radiosurgery, the efficacy is about the same regardless of which technique you use, which means you don't the risks of microvascular decompression do not go away, but the efficacy goes down, such that it's just as efficacious as doing a balloon compression or radiosurgery. So why expose someone to the risks of an open surgery if you're going to get the same outcome? And so that's why I've generally tended towards a balloon compression with MS-related trigeminal neuralgia. Again, we can use glycerol, radiofrequency ablation, or balloon compression. Here are some x-rays, and they won't project fantastically well, but uh, if you're watching this on a uh, video, you hopefully can pause and take a look. But you know, this is looking straight up through the face, as you can see that angle right there. Here's the angle of the mandible. If you look between uh, the mandible and the back molars, there's a little lucency right here, which is the foramen ovale. You can see we've advanced the needle straight into that lucency. We then go to a lateral view. And in the lateral view, you've got the cella, you've got the sphenoid. The needle is going right up to the um, anterior part of the sphenoid. When we inflate the balloon, it fills up Meckel's cave, and actually the tip of the balloon becomes deformed, and it's filling what we call porous trigeminus. That's where the trigeminal nerve enters Meckel's cave before it splits into the ganglion, or the ganglion splits into the three divisions. In my experience, many studies will show that if you get this deformation, you have a higher likelihood of getting pain relief for the patient with trigeminal neuralgia symptoms. Um, this can also cause a significant bradycardia. In fact, it can cause an asystole, which can alarm uh, your anesthesiologist. So you need to let them know ahead of time. Sometimes they'll put, place pacers on the patient. Um, in any case, you need to have uh, 
let that let the anesthesiologist know so they don't get scared. Uh, in terms of outcomes, and we're going to look at some relative outcomes, but I, I, you know, balloon compression being one of my preferred treatments. Uh, you know, the thought is that it preferentially injures the medium and large myelinated pain fibers. The patient is asleep. These patients are often in a pain crisis and they can't really wake up and cooperate with the, the testing for radiofrequency ablation. You get preservation of the small myelinated fibers, uh, which is uh, good for maintaining sensory reflexes. Um, and, re and the initial pain relief you know, is not too far off from what you get with a microvascular decompression. It's about 90% is what I tell my patients with uh, some recurrence, about 20% of patients are gonna have recurrence at three years. Um, some dysesthesia, so anesthesia, dolor dysesthesia meaning some uncomfortable numbness, anesthesia dolorosa, true anesthesia dolorosa is extremely rare, uh, but it can happen and I do counsel my patients about it. Glycerol rhizotomy um, is same approach, but instead of, um, Instead of uh, using a balloon, you inject some uh, radio opaque solution with high uh, concentration glycerol. And the idea there is to irritate the nerve with the glycerol. It's best for V3 distribution because the glycerol will settle into Meckel's cave, which you can see here. You can see the dependent fluid level. That's the fluid level. That's the glycerol filling Meckel's cave. Some initial good relief, but the recurrence rate is actually much higher with glycerol. And that's why, in my experience, I have not been using glycerol very often. It's also very hard to get pharmacy to formulate that. Um, and finally, there's radiofrequency ablation, uh, which uh, I do use, particularly when a patient has a very specific distribution of pain. I prefer not to use it for people with a, a V1 or a pain in their forehead or eye because I don't want to get corneal numbness. My experience is that people get a denser numbness with radiofrequency ablation, although it can be very effective. Uh, but you can see that the, effect, the efficacy rates are somewhere between 80 and 95%, again, uh, but recurrence rate is fairly high as well. So I use it for targeted treatments. Finally, we'll look at uh, radiosurgery. And radiosurgery is um, you know, very uh, non-invasive. Um, it's focused radiation at the root entry zone same area that we'd be operating on with an open microvascular decompression. Um, and what you can see is that the probability of sustained relief, there's a high rate of relief in the first six months, um, but there's a high rate of recurrence also. Uh, so if you have an early excellent outcome, you're gonna stay pretty good, but you see about 30% are gonna have a recurrence. You can though, but if you don't have a good relief early on, you're gonna fall off that, uh, map pretty quickly. And so you can, you might need further treatments. We should note, I mean, people can go in any order, right? So you can get radio surgery and then get a balloon compression, a microvascular decompression. You can get a microvascular decompression, then a radio surgery. Although once you have a microvascular decompression, it can be harder to see the transdermal nerve, but no one treatment rules out the next treatment. Radio surgery doses will vary depending on what type of system you use between 80, 85, or 90 gray to the root entry zone. And takes somewhere, you know, some people get relief in a few days. I generally tell my patients to wait up to three months, but usually four to six months to get their pain. Hey everyone, Ryan Rad here from neurosurgerytraining.org. If you like that video, subscribe and donate to keep our content available for medical students across the world.